yikes, the algae really built up on this deck over the winter. We need to replace this deck. This, the MKE 400, has become my new favorite on-camera shotgun mic. It has lived on this camera for three months and will continue to do so, but it has one major, major flaw, and that is the self-noise. And the thing is, you can't even tell the self-noise problem when you're outside. So we gotta go back into the studio so you can hear what it sounds like. And then after we talk about it, then, then I'm gonna rave about all the amazing things I love about this mic and why it's my favorite. But like, we gotta talk about the self-noise. So the self-noise, what do we mean by self-noise? Well, we mean the noise generated by the microphone itself, not the background noise or the room noise or the ambient noise. So listen, listen, listen. Are you hearing that? That's the noise generated by the microphone itself. This room is whisper quiet, apart from during the winter when the baseboard heaters are pinging in the background. Now, I have used a lot of on-camera shotgun mics over the years, both out in the world and here in the studio. In fact, at various different houses in various different studios, and I've never quite heard a self-noise this prominent at this price point. $40 mic, $50 mic, sure, absolutely, because it's drawing power from the camera, but this mic has a battery, and so with its own power, I did not expect to hear self-noise as prominent as this. Now, I reached out to Sennheiser because I thought, well, maybe I have a bad unit. I mean, it's not unusable, obviously. Like, this is fine, but, but it's noticeable in a way that I had never noticed it before. And Sennheiser was great. I had a video call with them. We talked about it, and I discovered something really interesting, which is... There's different self-noise at the three different gain stages that you can switch on on this mic. At the minus setting, the self-noise is around 16 dB. Now, that is totally usable. It's not studio quiet, like for studio microphones, voiceover, you need something at 10 dB or under for self-noise, but 16, totally usable, absolutely. At the base or neutral setting, it's something like 22 to 24 dB. I don't remember exactly what they said, but it's in that range. Again, totally usable. Not perfect, but totally usable. Like a very gentle amount of noise reduction software would instantly take care of that. But at the plus setting, it's 40 dB of self-noise. What? 40 dB of self-noise, the plus setting, which is the setting I'm using. And so you might be saying to yourself, well, so stop using that setting. Here's the problem. Conventional wisdom tells us that cameras have really bad audio preamps. In other words, the preamp built into a camera is kind of an afterthought. The camera's not meant to be an audio preamp. That's what we have dedicated audio capture devices for. So the preamp built into cameras, even expensive cameras, even professional grade cameras in some cases are just really, really mediocre, especially at the consumer or prosumer level, which is where most content creators operate. They're going to be hissy. They're going to have, uh, they're going to just be very, very noisy. And so conventional wisdom tells us that if you have a microphone that can push more gain into the camera. If you have a, the more sensitive your microphone is, the hotter you can push a signal into your camera's preamp, the lower you can turn down the camera's preamp, and that's what you want. You wanna use a lot less of the camera preamp and a lot more uh, on the way into the camera. So if you've got a Rode VideoMic NTG, you wanna turn up that gain dial, push more signal into the camera, and turn down the preamp in the camera. I've made this recommendation a million times. I've made videos about it. It's in my courses, Audio 101 for Content Creators. I talk about it there and it always works, but it doesn't work with this mic because the plus setting on this mic has 40 decibels of self noise. So if you're smart and following this, you'd say, well, okay, fine, then use one of the lower settings. Why not use the minus 20 setting, which only has 16 dB of self noise? Well, I did that test and I'm gonna recreate it for you. So here you go. This is the minus setting on the MKE 400 with the Sony a7 IV internal preamps turned up to 30, which is just about as high as it goes. The minus setting on the MKE 400 with the internal preamps on the Sony a7 IV turned up to 30. This is the base or neutral setting on the MKE 400 with the Sony a7 IV internal preamps on 18. This is the base or neutral setting on the MKE 400 with the Sony a7 IV internal preamps on 18.
This is the MKE 400 on the plus setting with the Sony a7 IV internal preamps on eight. This is the plus setting on the MKE 400 with the Sony a7 IV preamps internally on eight. What did you think about each of those? Well, as you can hear, the best option is the plus setting. The plus setting actually has the best signal to noise ratio. In spite of the 40 decibels of self noise, being able to turn way down the internal preamps on the Sony a7 IV resulted in the cleanest sound. Back when I was using really consumer grade cameras like the Panasonic Lumix G85 or the Canon M3 or M6, you know, those cameras had horrendous internal preamps and I don't think you could use this microphone with those cameras. But this may not be a deal breaker for you. If you're using this microphone the way that I am for vlogging, then you're fine because we don't vlog in perfect, pristine, dead quiet studios that are professionally treated like I'm in right now. We vlog in the world and no matter where you are in the world, if you're on the street, if you're running and gunning, whatever background noise exists in the environment is going to mask the 40 decibels of self noise in spite of how loud it is. Well, we made it all the way into New York. Venue for today, we've got it set up in uh, theater style. The only time when you're vlogging that you will notice that self noise is if you are in a whisper quiet environment, like I found myself late, late, late at night in a hotel room recently, which is actually when a viewer alerted me to the issue. They said they were listening themselves at night with good headphones on. And they said, you know, I've never heard this level of noise in any of your videos before. Or seasoned, it was like they dumped a whole jar of, of black pepper just all over it and salt. And it was like, it's too much. I don't think if you, a vlogger who is not known for audio education, were using this mic, even in a whisper quiet environment, I don't think anybody would really care about this level of self noise. But that's when it's going to come up. Where this would be a deal breaker is if you only produce videos in an environment like this. Okay, having gotten all of that out of the way, let's talk about the features of this mic and why it is my new favorite mic that is living permanently on my camera in spite of everything we just talked about. The Sennheiser MKE 400 is an on-camera shotgun mic. It has a super cardioid pickup pattern, an internal shock mount, and an integrated pop filter. Features include three gain stages for dramatically boosting or reducing input sensitivity, and a steep 200 hertz low cut for excessive wind or background noise. It also includes a 3.5 millimeter headphone output with volume control for real-time audio monitoring, which is very, very convenient. The MKE 400 comes with a 3.5 millimeter TRS to TRS cable for connecting to cameras and audio recorders, and a 3.5 millimeter TRS to TRRS cable for connecting to smartphones, tablets, and computers. And finally, it has the much beloved automatic on-off feature that companies like Rode and Deity have made so popular in recent years. Turn your camera on and the mic turns on. Turn your camera off and the mic turns off, saving you much battery life. And yes, it requires two AAA batteries, but the battery life lasts about 100 hours and has a light that comes on when you have about three hours left, which is more than sufficient. Coffee break. My favorite feature of this microphone is its form factor. Microphones like the Rode VideoMic NTG and the Deity D... Microphones like this, they just stick way out. And yeah, they have the really cool feature where you can like push them back on the, the camera body, but still, they're just way the heck out there. And it, it makes the whole setup, one, a lot clunkier, and two, more noticeable. Like, it, it, you know, in spite of the fact that I've produced hundreds of vlogs over the years, I still feel self-conscious vlogging in public, especially because I think people are becoming more and more aware of, of what they say on record. And people get real nervous if you got a camera and it looks like a professional thing. And, and this, this big honking thing, especially with the red, it just really sticks out. Same thing, yellow, big honking thing, it really sticks out. The Sennheiser MKE 400 is 
so small as a form factor that it doesn't even protrude. I, I have a prime lens on this. This is the 20 mil 1.8 uh, Sony G lens, and it doesn't even protrude further than that, than a small prime lens. It's fantastic. It makes the entire form factor of my vlogging setup much more discreet. And same thing for the shock mount. As great as these Rycote shock mounts are, they draw a lot of attention to themselves. They look unusual. Whereas the, the, the MKE 400 is just, it's just, Black. just kind of blends into the camera, but it becomes a part of the camera itself. I love both the position of the 3.5 millimeter jack on the microphone and the fact that it's a locking connector. It's positioned perfectly. It's below the front of the capsule itself, which means it doesn't protrude in any direction from the actual microphone. And it's a locking connector. Thank you, Sennheiser, for giving us a locking connector that can't be ripped out like most other 3.5 millimeters. Fantastic. Next, the built-in pop filter is incredible, incredible. This thing that looks like the mic is not actually the mic. The mic is a very, very small, thin capsule inside of this thing. This thing is like one of those, those blimps that professional, you know, sound crews use on movies. It's a pop filter that really works. It works so well that I almost never even bother putting on the furry windscreen that comes with it when I'm outside, when it's windy. I don't even find I need it, but of course, if you do, you've got it. And it's super sleek, form-fitted, it goes on really easy, it comes off easy, unlike so many of them that you really have to fight with to pull on to, to a microphone. But most important is the tone, the sound quality. We've already talked about the self-noise, let's ignore that for a second. The sound quality, the tone of this mic is wonderful. Now, Sennheiser has a very, very particular tonal characteristic. It sets it apart from every other type of mic. You can always tell you're listening to a Sennheiser. It's got a very crisp, very pronounced high end. It's clear. Sennheiser mics are clear. Clarity is the word that really comes to mind when I think of these microphones. Okay, this is a test between the Rode VideoMic NTG and the Sennheiser MKE 400. The Rode is on the right, the Sennheiser is on the left, and we can listen to these back and forth. If you have a very sibilant voice, like Curtis Judd does, and he's always talking about that, Sennheiser mics are not going to do you any favors. But if you have a non-sibilant voice, or if you have a deep voice like I do, and especially if you're out in the world vlogging, the clarity that comes with this mic is so useful to help you cut right through the background noise in the environment. And this mic is a supercardioid, not a cardioid. What's so amazing about supercardioid and why I love it so much for an on-camera shotgun mic like this is it's super focused. It picks up right from the front, very little to the sides. And that means that you are going to get a much more present sound even if you move further away. I have found that even when I was vlogging, like a family vlog and my wife or my kid was way across the room, 10, 12 feet away, somehow this mic was picking them up perfectly. You wanna go bumpity bumpity in the stroller? <laughs> you wanna go bumpity bumpity what? in the stroller? What did you say? I understood that. The trade off is that it actually does pick up a little bit from behind the mic. Now a lot of people find this undesirable. It means that if there's some noise going on back there behind the camera, a super cardio a microphone will actually pick that up and a lot of people don't like that. But why does it benefit vloggers? I'm sure you can already figure it out because we spend a lot of time flipping the camera around and narrating while we point at something. Have you never had milk before? It's good stuff. And what happens with a typical cardioid mic is as soon as you turn it around and start narrating from the other side, the mic is facing that way. And because it has such good rejection, a cardioid mic rejects so well, your voice gets completely lost, super muffled, at <laughs> but not with a super cardioid because it actually is sensitive directly behind the mic. And I find that while it's a little muffled, of course, because it's not designed to pick up from behind, I can actually be heard perfectly clearly, clearly enough for a vlog when I turn it around. And I love that. And so for all of those reasons, this is my new on-camera shotgun mic. It has lived on this camera literally for three months and will continue to do so. 
For a vlogger, I can handle the self-noise. And when I'm in the studio, I never use an on-camera shotgun mic. When I'm here in the studio doing talking head videos, whether it's for my professional work as a speaker, coach, consultant, or whether it's for videos on my audio channel doing tutorials or reviews, I don't use a mic on the top of the camera. This is only a scratch track for me to sync a, a professional grade mic that I'm going to boom overhead later. I'm not doing that in this video because this video is designed to show off this mic. But in any normal video I'm doing that's not a mic review, I have a microphone boomed overhead just out of frame. My mic of choice is the Octava MK012. In that case, this is just for a scratch track. It's just a way for me to sync up the audio with the video later. So for me, this mic is perfect in spite of its one glaring major, 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 major flaw. So if you found this video helpful, useful, insightful, or interesting, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, ask me questions in the comments, and I will see you soon. Come back anytime to sound better and level up. All right, I'm out.